Right, now that I've had the eye camper for a little while now, um, coming up close to 12 months, I thought I'd make a video showing you sort of my top 10 hacks, hints, mods, tips, whatever you want to call them, um, of things that I've done to this Sky Camp Mini 3 um, that's just sort of improved our time with it. Um, we kind of start sort of on the outside um, with some basic stuff um, and then we'll go onto the inside. Everything I am going to talk about today, I will put a link in the description if I can find one, um, just so that you can find them dead easy after that. Um, so let's dive into them 10 um, hacks and mods that will make your eye camper better than it already is. Mod number one is actually um, super simple and probably one of the cheapest that I'm going to show you today. Um, it's two little spirit levels. I've got one on the back here and one on the side under the ladder. Um, and I put this first because ultimately if you're not level, you're not going to have a good night's sleep. Um, I have since moved to a digital inclinometer in the cab of the truck just so that I can level um, the tent on my own um, rather than when I come with my partner, you know, if, if I'm ever going out on a solo camp or whatever. Um, but these spirit levels we use to sort of work together and, and get this leveled up on the ramps and things like that. So they're just held on with double sided, sided tape, bearing in mind I hit these with pressure washers and things regularly when I'm washing the, the truck and the tent. And um, they're still held on there. They've, they've held up to sort of 12 months worth of UV exposure and sun and weather and the British winter. Um, so very, very happy with them. Um, I would highly, highly recommend them. You know, they're gonna be a couple of quid just to, to put on there, put on the bottom. And it just means that you'll always make sure that you're level, have a good night's sleep, not wake up with like all the blood in your head or your feet um, and just so that you're not rolling around in the tent so that's mod number one spirit levels on both sides mod number two relates to these tension poles for the entrance um, rain fly canopy um, anybody who's got an eye camper knows that you have um, three sets of these two pairs for each of the sort of outside flaps on the window and then one pair for this outer rain fly these ones on the outer rain fly canopy are different to the other two um, and in the eye camper Sky Camp 3, you've got them sort of sewn into this pouch in the entrance of the door. Um, and to make sure that I can find these ones nice and easy, I've just wrapped each end and the middle in tape. Um, and it just means no matter where they are in that pouch, I can find these ones super quick because these are the ones I want to use first. Um, so just wrap them in tape, or I've actually used electrical heat shrink at the, the upper ends and then use tape in the middle because I thought of the middle tape as an afterthought. Um, and it just makes them super easy to find. So as you've seen in, in sort of other videos of how quickly it is to set this up, um, this just shaves a couple of seconds off, which just makes it even nicer um, to, to put up and down. Number three is um, more of a tip than sort of a, a hack or a mod. Um, it's in relation to this, which is this shoe storage. Um, you can get an official one from iCamper, but they are really quite expensive. Um, this one's from a company called Camper, um, K-A-M-P-A. -A. Um, when I bought it, it was sort of the best part of half price of the iCamper one, and I would definitely rather have two of these than one of the iCamper one, just for the sake of having an iCamper shoe storage, um, particularly for somebody that owns a, a 3.0 variant of a tent. Um, the colour schemes are pretty much identical. Um, obviously, if you've got a two, it wouldn't match sort of that brown, burgundy colour and red, um, but realistically, it depends how bothered you are about colour or whether you would rather have it um, at a, at a lower price. Um, in all intensive purposes, it is exactly the same in terms of its functionality. Um, you know, you, you open it up via a zip, there's tiered pockets that you can use. It's got a breathable thing on the top. Um, you could use this as sort of storage as, uh, in, in for your kitchen and stuff like that as much as you could use it for, for shoes. Um, but I clip mine on the sort of the front of the ladder and one of the eyelets under here because if both eyelets are used at the back it just feels like it's too far underneath and you can't really use it very well. Um, so for tip number three, get yourselves one of these from Camper. I will definitely put a link in the description so that you can save um, some money as well because um, otherwise it is exactly the same as the, the iCamper variant for that one as well. Mod number four is tucked away under the, the ladder out here. Um, it is just attached with a magnetic strip, which is a PIR or motion light. It just means that in the middle of the night when you need to go out and go to the toilet um, and you can't find your torch or whatever, um, as you swing your legs out, the motion sensor under here will um, activate and then the light comes on and you just get a little bit more light around the ladder um, so that you can find where your shoes are and stuff like that as well. Um, this one that I got is USB rechargeable. You press it once and it's sort of motion activated mode. If you press it again, it will stay on permanently press it again and it goes off um, like I say it is removable and it is magnetic so that it means that um, I can just sort of chuck it on there um, also that can live on there um, when the ladder is shut and the eye camper is shut so it can just stay in there the whole time and um, because that foam pad is deep enough um, that this light is not interfered with by the ladder and um, so that's great so that just lives in my tent permanently again link will be in the description for this one or something similar um, if I find something better 
number five I was uh, debating whether to put in or not because it is quite specific to my um, situation but what I'm going to talk about has loads of different uses in sort of camping and overland and kind of things anyway um, but number five obviously because of where my eye camper is in relation to a pickup truck you it's not high enough it's, it, it is below the level of the cab so you can't use the tension poles on this canopy um, but to get a good through draft for, for ventilation and condensation um, if you use these suction cup anchors, which is just like a suction cup which you lock down um, and then has a carabiner on it, I've had to put a smaller carabiner on because the one that's on the, the actual suction anchor isn't, um, isn't small enough to go through the eyelet on the eye camp. It can't be flat, um, but it now just means that I've got a bit of airflow into the, into the tent as well. Um, but, you know, we use these a lot for a canopy off the side of the cab that way. Um, we have also used them for washing lines and things as well. Um, so even if you can't use them for this setup, um, you can use them for lots of other things. You know, um, where I work, we take a, a school group out on the Duke of Edinburgh Award. We are going to use these suction anchors between the two school minibuses um, and put a tarp over the top so that we've got a big shelter. They've got loads and loads of uses and they're actually really, really cheap. Um, so these are some of the best things that I think I purchased for sub £10. Um, got a set of four so we've got loads of options to use them and um, would highly recommend them like I say I wasn't sure I was going to put this in this video but when I posted this on Facebook on the iCamper UK group um, loads of people sort of said they'd had similar issues but didn't know how to solve it so I'm putting it in here so that you know about it as well right as you can see we are inside the iCamper now um, I'm going to talk about the things that are behind me in a second um, but for modification number six um, we have the carpeted interior um, of the iCamper um, some people do this because they find they have issues with condensation under the mattress. Um, I've had both the standard mattress and the iCamper RTT Comfort inflatable mattress um, and with both of those have never had an issue with condensation under the mattress. I've just done it because I like the feel of it. Um, the aluminium sort of honeycomb shell was quite cold if you ever touched it. Um, more so a problem with the split mattress design of the standard mattress. Not so much a problem with the inflatable but it just gives it that premium feel that I think an iCamper deserves on the inside. Um, these carpet tiles were from a store in England called B&M. Um, I imagine it's the sort of the Home Depot equivalent for Americans, um, Australians, not sure, maybe Bunnings or something like that. Um, but yeah, so this is actually just held down with double-sided carpet tape, so it would be very easy to remove if not. Um, I did a sort of a single strip in the middle. I think they're um, 60 by 60 centimeter tiles. I went with a sort of a dark charcoal grey or whatever you want to call it just so that it sort of matches the, the, the exterior of the tent. Some people might want a lighter colour so that it, it brings up the light inside. Um, so that's mod number six is carpet tiles. Some people do it out of necessity. Um, I did it just because um, I like the look of it and it just made it feel a bit more premium. It's nicer on your knees when you're shuffling around. Um, yeah, would highly recommend. Right, now that we're on tip number seven, I'm having to start getting a bit creative with camera angles. So if you could see the other side of this, it would look utterly ridiculous. Um, but it, again it's not really a mod it's just something that you can buy um, but it does make it easier I've mentioned extensively how much I like the, the RTT Comfort Mavis in another video um, I'll link that up here or, or whatever you do if I can work out how to do it um, but would highly highly recommend that it, it's an absolute game changer for reasons covered in that video um, but alongside that we now keep two three season bags and four pillows in this tent um, on a previous trip we tried to use um, various different pillows but the tent was getting quite difficult to close so we've got around that by using vacuum bags um, and there's now four pillows in across these two vacuum bags and it just makes it so much easier to um, close the tent mainly even with this extra storage bulge on the on the iCamper 3 um, it is a little bit more difficult to, to shut um, it, it, it you can do it but it just feels a bit wrong and a bit hard to do um, whereas with these vacuum bags it makes a massive difference um, these vacuum bags that I bought are, are the jumbo ones they're probably a little bit excessive for pillows and um, could probably get away with the large um, they did come with a hand pump but I, I've not tried it yet but I really don't fancy using the um, hand pump to take the air out so what I do use is that flex tail gear mini um, pump that I used to inflate the mattress and um, again highly highly recommend these fully explain why in that video but basically this pump is utterly brilliant and um, we used it for a week in the Lake District um, put the the bed up up and down countless times um, across that week because um, we did force campsites in a week 
um, and we actually were putting the, the bed up and down a few times a day given that we were using the truck to, to move around as well um, and I never had to charge it once. It is also a, a light and you can plug your phone into it as well as a battery pack um, so it inflates out of that side, deflates out of there um, so you can use it as a vacuum on these bags as well. Um, it's the first time we're using these bags on this trip but I can already tell that we're going to end up using them a lot. Um, so tip number seven, if you are struggling to get gear in your tent, particularly if you've got an iCamper 2, um, you could easily fit a sleeping bag in one of these and then use this pump, um, which I will definitely link in the description because it is worth its weight in gold 100%. Um, you could use these bags and um, this pump with sleeping bags and stuff and you could get so much more in there as well, um, even without the inflatable mattress. Um, so be a bit clever with your storage. I know a lot of people use vacuum bags for clothes, maybe haven't thought about using them for in the tent. Might be a little bit annoying if you're moving to a new site every day, but if it's the difference between having pillows in your vehicle and um, not taking them because of space, um, 30, 40 quid or whatever these are now, it's well worth that pump. So tip number seven, 100% is vacuum bags for, for various different reasons. Right, mod number eight is something I think everybody should have on the inside of their eye camper, and that is LED lighting. Um, I've got LEDs sort of stuck as one continuous strip all around the metal inside edge of the fiberglass clamshell. Um, they are activated via this remote. I've got it so it terminates down in this bottom right hand corner um, into a, just a, a USB battery pack. Um, if you start in this corner and go all the way around, five meters covers pretty much the entire length bar about 10 centimeters. Um, so just bear that in mind. It's about, it is five meters that you will need if you want to cover the inside of a Sky Camp Mini. Not sure about a, a Sky Camp. Um, but I've got one of these remotes. Um, and I've actually got two because I did originally have a, a two meter set of lights in and it covered from sort of piston to piston. Um, and it was fine, but I just like the idea of having more light. So I put these ones in, you know, they can cover different color grades um, so that if um, we're in an area that has some size quite a lot of flying bugs and stuff. We'll either go sort of red or orange or yellow just so that we've got them. Um, we often go towards sort of the white if we're using it inside, even though these don't do a true white, it is quite a blue white. Um, but you can sort of flash them, fade them, pulse them, smooth transitions between them all. Um, it's one of those that, you know, we'll barely use any of these sort of functions, I'll be totally honest, but if you go for this sort of fade effect, hopefully you'll see it cycling in the background. Um, we quite like them. The, I, I did buy quite a cheap strip, so I will link a better one in the description because sometimes these play up a little bit with the battery pack. Um, but you unplug them and plug them back in and it's fine. Um, and it just highlights this lovely um, map on an eye camper um, very, very well. So I would definitely recommend these um, in terms of getting some lights on the inside. Right, for mod number nine, you're just going to have to accept that I've got the, the same camera angle again because um, I'm running out of ideas of how to get different camera angles in here. Um, but it is this cargo net back here. I do genuinely think this is one of the biggest failings of iCamper um, of not utilizing the inside of the shell um, as well as say the things like Alucab do um, for both of them being premium brands. I think Alucab does really pip iCamper there. All you would need is some pockets in here. Things for like a jumper or a t-shirt or some socks or your phone. Yes, you've got the, the pouches down here, but Alucab have these and the storage up there. Um, so this cargo net goes on here um, you could store jumpers behind their t-shirts You could put pillows in there when you're not using them. You could put your sleeping bags in there um, It's not ideal, but it, it you know, it's, it's strong enough that it'll store a little bit of clothing um, In terms of keeping the tent organized as you're in there um, Being totally honest. We don't use this all the time um, But it is there as an option. It does feel a little bit claustrophobic on your face If you say it's overcoming the 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 one sort of real gripe I have with eye camper that they don't use that space very well um, but other than that, the cargo net will go in there and you could sort of save, save yourself a little bit of space. There are some hooks down in the bottom corner which iCamper have got which I don't actually know what they use them for. So we use a plastic carabiner that comes with a cargo net there. And then this sort of bungee just gas pistons up here that you can use just so that you can um, cover those off. So that's one thing that's worth mentioning with that as well. Um, I do have a carabiner sort of that I use to clip onto the, the interim down there to hold the middle of the net down. Um, but like I say, in all honesty, once I finish this video, I'm probably going to take this out again. Um, but I just, just did think it was worth mentioning because I seen this on a video and, in, and originally quite liked the idea, but living with it, not so great. I know some people do put smaller cargo nets up here. 
um, again for jumpers it's something I might look into because um, there's various different tie down points up here that you could use and then the sort of to the, the main hoop up here that you could stuff a jumper in there you could even potentially put like an iPad up there or something to, to watch um, but I do know some people put iPads on the inside of this bug liner here um, and just sort of leave it up there whilst they're using it and then bring it down once they're finished um, but that's mod number nine the cargo net Right, and then last but not least, again, it's not really a mod or a hack, it's super simple, but it's just something that I've learned whilst living with an eye camper for sort of the last 12 months using it, um, on weekends for, for sort of various different trips, um, is this. It's just some pipe insulation or pipe lagging, whatever you call it in your country, um, over these gas pistons, because <laughs> these are metal and these get very cold, um, and when you're sleeping with somebody, particularly in a Sky Camp Mini side by side, um, these are cold in the middle of the night. We, on our last trip, it was minus one degree C overnight. Um, we were plenty warm inside the eye camera, but my, these were cold. Um, I had really small pieces of this, and it was fine, um, but now we've just gone and put sort of one on each side. These will just live in the tent. Um, yeah, I could probably get some more and go all the way up, but we'll see how these ones go there. It's super cheap to replace. Um, but it just means that if you touch it with your shoulder and you've not got a t-shirt on or whatever, you don't get that shock of it being so cold in the middle of the night. So for our 10th and final mod that I'm willing to show you on camera is sort of this one here. Um, and it is just some pipe insulation over the gas pistons. Right, I know this video said that it was going to be 10 mods, but I've kind of got like a little bonus 11th for you. Um, I'm not going to show you this one for, for reasons that will become apparent. Um, but obviously this lives on my vehicle all year round. I just don't have anywhere to store it. Yes, I've got the eye camper locks on there, um, but for that added layer of security, I do have um, an air tag. In fact, I have two air tags in and around this tent somewhere. Um, if you do a quick search on YouTube, you will see that there are various videos for the AirTag speaker mod where that you can um, disable the speaker so that even though it will alert somebody that they are being tracked via an AirTag, the speaker won't work so that they won't be able to find it. Um, and the idea is, is just that it's an extra layer of security on top of everything else that if God forbid something happened, I could look at getting my um, eye camper back. Um, I'm sure you'll understand why I haven't showed you where that is, um, but if you have an eye camper or any rooftop tent, um, I would highly, highly recommend that you do um, have at least one air tag in there somewhere, um, but you must disable the speaker for it to be effective. Um, so make sure that you get them in there. Again, links in the description. I know you know all where to find air tags from, but if you buy them through my link, it'll help out just that little bit more for me, um, just for the, the effort that's sort of gone into this video. Um, like I said, I have two because then if they find one they think they found it and then that's it um, but then there'll be a second one in there and it's all just about buying yourself time and um, there are loads of places that you could think about hiding one in and around your tent just be creative with it you might even want to have one in your vehicle itself um, and then one in the tent just so that you've got that extra layer of security um, so that sort of tip 11 is a bit of a bonus is thinking about extra security using an Apple AirTag if you are an Apple user Android not sure if the equivalent exists but the amount of iPhones that are out there anywhere, whack one in and it will help you no doubt. And that's it, that's my 10 slash 11 um, hacks, tips, mods, um, recommendations for an eye camper. But to be honest, most of them would work in any rooftop tent. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed what you're seeing, consider subscribing, drop me a thumbs up. They do really help. I know people say that all the time, but it really, really does. Um, I'm hoping to follow this up with, a, with another video sort of this time next year, see what else I come up with. I've already got one idea of some kind of canopy on here, um, not using the iCamper one because again they're really really expensive. Um, I do quite fancy a 270 degree awning so I'd have to work out how that would work and um, bearing in mind I don't have a roof rack yet. Um, and just any other sort of tips and tricks I come up with over the next 12 months of living with my eye camper. If you have any recommendations, questions, follow up, um, please just drop them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them as quickly and as best as I can. Um, and I know everybody says this, but all the links in the descriptions um, that are affiliate links will be clearly marked as such. Um, if you were so kind as to buy them from there, that would be a massive help to me. Um, and it just means I get something a little bit back from this video, because at this point my channel is not monetized. Um, I do it because I enjoy it. That's a pheasant if you're not from the UK, that noise. Um, I do make these because I enjoy them, but obviously there's that little bit of financial reward. does does go a long way, um, and it just means that I can buy more stuff that I can show you on video later. Um, if you've seen anything in my setup that you want to know more questions about, please do let me know. I've got plans to make a video eventually about the, the draw system that I made for the back um, and the various equipment that's in there. But anything else you need to know, please just drop it in the comments and I will see you all next time. Other than that, happy camping. And
make sure you get out there and take some photos. One last thing, um, on the topic of photos, if you do want to follow my sort of build, if you want to call it that, or just my adventures, um, I do have a separate Instagram channel called Amarok Weekenderlander. Um, I have stole that from a guy called Mike at Last Line of Defence, who's a much, 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 much bigger channel than this. Um, but the term Weekenderlander is something I really like. This is a daily driven truck. It's never going to be some kind of off-road chariot with sort of the Tacomas and Tundras um, you see in America. Um, I would love it to be, but it has also got to be semi-fuel efficient. Um, so Amarok Weekenderlander, if you fancy following along and sort of seeing some more, slightly more frequent updates than I post on YouTube, that would be much appreciated as well. Until next time, see you later.